So welcome everyone to our latest Bright Talk on the topic of content meets commerce, or how can you boost sales through storytelling? We will talk about what is storytelling, in which ways it can help your business, and how it fits into innovative online shopping experiences. And with me today is Mark Bones from Episerver. Hi Mark, can you introduce yourself? Absolutely. Uh, hi, I'm Mark Bones. I'm the uh, Product Strategy Director and Evangelist for Episerver, uh, responsible for, for DAC and Continental Europe, uh, especially in the field of product marketing. Um, but I also work uh, in an international exchange in order to convey knowledge and experience uh, internally as well as externally. And I'm also responsible for uh, partners such as you. Well, thank you. Uh, and let me introduce myself as well. I'm the owner and CEO of Brighter Tea, uh, a team of marketing and technology experts spread over three offices in Austria, Germany, and Poland. And we create and run innovative and visionary digital customer experiences. Our exper expertise ranges from small campaign landing pages over large scale international websites to complex online and mobile applications. Of course, including online shopping experiences of all kinds. Mark, to start with, can you explain us what is storytelling and how does it matter? To me personally, storytelling, I think, is a means of emotionalizing uh, products or mere contents um, to a degree where user interaction is not only engaged, but even more so fostered along the customer journey. Um, and this means that, you know, merchandises, especially in a highly competitive market and, and because of a nonlinear uh, customer journey, are obliged to establish um, an emotional appeal uh, that is being aligned with merchandising KPIs, uh, the organization's marketing strategy, or the overall you know, uh, marketing goals you have. Um, and especially in e-commerce, I think uh, storytelling is less about focusing on selling products per se, but rather customer retention uh, and, a, and a, what I would call feel-good factor that translates uh, to a strong bond between brand and customer. Um, and, and basically, storytelling comes in, in, in different shapes. Um, for instance, in uh, communicating a successful conversion, um, booking a travel journey, for instance, is a very good example because this is really something uh, that demands uh, communicating a, a positive momentum that you that you gain uh, once you have completed uh, a, a travel purchase. Mm. And the main aspect, however, um, is always related to the customer themselves and how they interact with the brand, uh, the organization on an emotional level. So there's basically uh, three components. It's brand, product, and buyer. Um, but it's also about trust. Um, and, and given you know, the, the many brands uh, that inhabit uh, today's commerce environment, so to say, uh, loyal customers simply call for uh, a brand uh, they put their trust in and, and, you know, thus converting over and over and over again along the customer journey. Um, and I think it, it can almost be described as a form of humanizing the, the shopping experience. Um, and I think it's a logical reaction uh, to buying products or interacting with, with content. Um, because uh, human beings, you know, either want to maintain the status quo, that is, I need the same product uh, or want to interact with the same level of content or step up a level, which is upselling. And I think it's important to, to take the concept of, of customer journey literally. That is, the customer is on a, on a journey. Um, sort of, you know, the analogy would then be using a travel guide, which is storytelling, to find their target, which is conversion, product, content, and so on. So basically, it's about, you know, don't sell your product. Sell the idea of what it means to interact with your brand, uh, with you as a marketer, and, and with, with, you know, with the, the, the content you have on your, on your uh, website. Because after all, Facts, tells, uh, uh, facts tell, but stories sell. So how does storytelling relate to digital commerce then? I think it's important to, to understand that uh, nowadays customers do not merely want to buy a product. They want to be you know, taken by the hand alongside the customer journey uh, and see what this, content is, uh, what this product is about in, in terms of content, what the brand is about in terms of content. Um, there are some uh, very good examples uh, out there. For instance, AmericanMuscle.com. Um, American Muscle, uh, they sell uh, muscle cars or parts uh, for muscle cars. So they, they basically sell aftermarket parts for Ford Mustangs, um, which is a highly emotional car um, and, and, and mostly purchased by, by car lovers. So they feature products uh, in, in videos on the same page uh, where you can, can buy these products, including image, price, uh, product ratings to encourage product discovery. And they also enable prospects to talk to what they call enthusiasts. So this is basically people who have already bought parts or who already own a Ford Mustang. Um, and, and this way, they create a valuable professional 
uh, and yet personal relationship. So basically what you do is you use content, you use stories, you use anything that sort of describes the product more than the mere product description does um, and create a form of, of trust and a form of interest for, uh, the, uh, for the buyer, per se. Uh, another very good example, I think, is uh, Eason. Uh, Eason is an Irish 200-year-old book retailer. Um, and nowadays, I mean, in, 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 you know, in, in times where you have to compete against Amazon, um, which uh, may be hard at times, um, what Eason does is, I think, very interesting. Um, Eason does not only concentrate on the transactional aspect of selling books, but even more so on storytelling. So you will experience on a website um, stories about the author, stories about the, the story uh, itself, um, and you are being guided towards uh, a, a sort of 360 degree view of the author, uh, of their, uh, you know, of their books, of their stories. Um, so it's not only about buying the cheapest books uh, and, and being delivered very fast, but it's even more so about, you know, getting to know the author, getting to know the books you're, you're about to read, because still books are very emotional um, emotional uh, product um, and, and and readers oftentimes uh, you know emotionally attach themselves to, to to books and stories. But from your perspective as a digital agency, so what do you see as the, the biggest pain points when implementing a highly visual online shopping experience? Well, from my perspective, the biggest issue is definitely having all the building blocks as a well integrated system. And with well-integrated system, I mean not only the very technical elements that need to work smoothly together. Well-integrated also means the offering side where editors work on the content that together becomes the shopping experience. Imagine you're creating a very visual product landing page. You have to combine rich media content, images and maybe also videos with text content and the transactional elements of an online shop. So you are already dealing with three very different kinds of contents and functionalities. Depending on your choice of tools, you may as well already be using at least three separate software solutions here, from digital asset management over e-commerce system to web CMS. And maybe a fourth and fifth one in case you're integrating with a PIM and uh, an ERP system. And actually a sixth one if you're using a campaign management tool for sending out emails. I think you see my point here. You're adding more and more complexity and effort. Imagine having to run and maintain so many different systems with all their separate user interfaces, user accounts, roles and permissions and different workflows and processes. And then think about things like analytics, tracking, personalization, or A-B testing. With so many systems combined, for sure, these aren't easy tasks. An issue of its own is providing a realistic and visual editor experience. If preview and testing are rather complex and lengthy tasks, how can you expect your editorial team to create stunning visuals? The support of different screen resolutions with responsive designs hasn't made this any easier in the past years uh, either. And all of, all of that, of course, also contributes to more effort on the technical implementation side. And uh, this is where, where we spend a lot of our time. You will be slower, create more issues, and it will also be harder to find service providers that can deal with uh, all or even most of the building blocks of your overall system. So the bottom line is what looks nice on the outside can be quite complex and hard to maintain. And you will eventually reach very hard limits with an approach that relies on too many moving parts. With the trend of uh, implementing personalization across the entire user and buyer experience, this becomes even more of an issue. So how would you recommend solving these issues? Well, I see two solutions for this problem that both actually go into the same direction. And both are, and it won't surprise you, focused at removing moving parts. You can go in direction of a fully custom web application, um, or you switch to a platform that combines more of the otherwise separate steps into one. It's that simple. The custom web application obviously solves the problem of having one integrated solution uh, on technical level. However, it will be much harder to maintain for the editorial team. And the second path leads towards a more integrated marketing suite that reduces moving parts by having more of the features on board. And to be honest, that is exactly why we invited you from EpiServer to join us in this Bright Talk. 
because you have a software solution that allows to create visual shopping experiences based on a suite of software that is fully integrated. So many of the required steps are merged into one system. And even more importantly, a sing there is a single user interface across these things. So editors can create highly visual websites and online shops in a VisiWeek environment with personalization, A-B testing, and all the other fancy features you expect to have available these days. So overall, you have to remove uh, moving parts to make it simpler. So it's, it becomes less complex uh, to maintain on both the technical level, but also the content level. Absolutely. And I mean, uh, we have seen, uh, you know, many, many different uh, issues uh, in this respect. And I think it, it would be best if, um, you know, people get in touch with you or with us, um, you as an agency, us as the vendor. Um, and um, yeah, just, just tell your stories uh, in order to tell stories. Exactly. The same goes from my side. Uh, so thank you for your time, Mark. Absolutely. And we look forward to feedback from prospects and clients. And uh, we're available if you want to talk more about this. 24-7. <laughs> <laughs> Have a nice day, everyone. Thanks.